what is uh, volatility modeling and uh, where it is used in finance volatility modeling is quite heavily used in finance uh, we'll try to understand a bit of a theory about uh, why volatility is important in in finance especially in quantitative finance and what modeling techniques are used to you know measure volatility right so in finance what is very important is to uh, predict uh, mean mean of the stock price mean of the price of a bond or any financial asset right predicting the mean or the average value in the future is very very important but what is equally important is to also predict the variance of it that means how much the price would vary in the future and that is extremely important because variance will tell you how volatile tile the asset is how much risk is associated with the given asset so uh, variance is the way to assess the uncertainty in the price movement of a given asset or the risk associated with the asset the more is the variance the greater is the risk okay uh, so mean gives us the expected return whereas variance gives us gives us the insight about the expected risk and both are important right when you are investing in an in an asset or you're trading in an asset it's very very important to know uh, what is the expected return in the future and what is the expected risk in the future now expected risk itself comes up with a bit of uncertainty it is expected not the real but predicting or uh, well in advance is very important before you invest your money so that's why it's very important uh, that you know we are able to quantify uh, the variance uh, and to be able to uh, forecast it in the future right so here is this chart of price movement right when you simulate the price for a given asset you know you can find out the price could move at any direction right so this is simulation of let's say you know 10000 simulations on the prices of a given financial asset and the variance um could be small or could be huge depending on what is the uh like how volatile is the asset some assets are more volatile than the other for example the small cap stocks uh, are more volatile compared to the uh, large cap stocks that means uh, the upside movement and the the downside moment for a large cap stock is less compared to that of a small cap stock but what is important is that what how to measure that and that is what we will uh, see now volatility well, in different ways uh, you know you can you know uh, you can measure it uh, on a daily basis or on annualized basis uh and if you have the annualized basis you can also convert that to daily basis and the other way around and this is the formula volatility uh daily volatility is nothing but volatility annualized multiplied to square root of t t means the time dimension right so you could do that for uh 10 days 20 days 30 days uh we assume that the number of uh, trading days in a given year is 252 that is what quite commonly used okay um <clears throat> now understanding the historical and implied volatility um the historical volatility is based on the past data so how much uh volatile the given asset was in in the past so that you can assess based on you know the historical data uh, of uh, price data for that given asset and implied volatility is about forecasting so this is just a terminology so whenever you find out this terminology in the financial literature uh, you just need to yeah understand okay what the difference is uh, one is the historical the other one is the forecasted one right and one can be derived from the other for example uh, the implied volatility can indeed be found out from the historical volatility right well uh, there are many modeling techniques the famous ones are uh, you know just uh, assuming that the historical volatility will repeat in the future so hence just use the historical data and uh, compute the volatility uh, and there are various ways of doing that um, and and assume that the historical pattern will repeat in the future then you have more uh, mathematical based uh, modeling technique 
uh, using stochastic calculus as a geometric Brownian motion, which is a heavy mathematical topic, uh, which is quite used in uh, in uh, in finance as well. And you have statistical techniques, also arch and guards modeling. If you have understanding of statistics or econometrics, I'm sure you know that uh, time series modeling techniques such as arch, autoregressive conditional heteroscedasticity, and guards model. They are also used for volatility modeling for financial assets. Historical, uh, uh, you know, method uh, or historical volatility measure is very simple to understand. Actually, you just take the simple average. That could also be a way of uh, predicting the future, right? Uh, that could be a simple way, right? You take the historical data for last. Uh, you know, let's say 30 days or, or 60 days or one year for a given asset and see how volatile it was in the last period, last one month or three months or one year, you know, takes, for example, stock price and take the simple average of that. Okay. And that could be the prediction for the future. You could also have simple moving average, for example, how volatile was the asset uh, over a period of time and taking a moving average. That means um, moving average is nothing but uh, average uh, by changing time periods, right? Uh, you're changing the time periods, you're taking average uh, for a given set of time periods and uh, keep adding one more time period over time. Uh, for example, it could have a three months moving average, a three period moving average, four period moving average, six period moving average, you know, uh, three period moving average is, is quite popular. Exponential moving average is a slightly better form of which is more continuous time uh, moving average, uh, which is very much like moving a uh, simple moving average. It's just that in exponential moving average, you take uh, you give more importance to the recent observation compared to the uh, the older observations, right? So the weightage is given to more recent observations. So that's um, exponential moving average. Right. But the problem is that uh, the assumption that the historical data will, historical pattern will repeat in the future is uh, a too big uh, an assumption and this is the reason why it could, it could overfit actually any model uh, on historical data uh, purely based on these simple averages could overfit. Therefore, if you are using it, make sure that you use more data and very important to do a proper testing or proper validation of the model, otherwise that could give us misleading results. Then uh, geometrical Brownian motion is, is more complicated modeling technique, very uh, popular in asset pricing, uh, in option pricing, in asset pricing, uh, black skull models in, in finance where uh, GBM is used. So this is <coughs> more of a, a stochastic mathematical equation which takes into account the, volat the historical volatility, historical standard deviations, the mean of the uh, mean return mean asset return for example um, okay and then you have the this slight increase in the in uh, in in the price of the asset ds which is you know um, the delta s small increase in asset over time and you have a uh, stochastic term related to the brownian motion or wainer process right put that in the equation a small change in the stock price is a function of mean of the stock price and then the standard deviation of their stock price stock price itself change in the time and change in the brownian process okay we will not go into the theory of it as to how this you know equation has been derived but this is the final set of equation that can also be used for uh, for variety of things, especially in asset pricing, this is quite used. Then you have Garch and Arch models. So Arch model is nothing but, and you know the Arch variance of a given stock is is a linear combination of the error terms. Uh, okay, the error terms in in the process, uh, in the time series process. Okay, uh, the historical error terms. Um, so these are square of the historical error terms, right? And you have uh, the alpha 0 to alpha p, the p number of uh, these estimates and this can be, um, you know, the, 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 the estimates can be found out using the maximum likelihood estimation. For example, alpha 0, alpha 1, all these um, estimates can be found out through, uh, through uh, MLE, maximum likelihood estimation. Garch is slight different to Arch. 
which is that you take not just the error terms but also the um, the volatility for the previous periods right so volatility for the current period is a function of volatility of the previous period and the error square of or the square of the error terms right so it's just a um, it, it's very similar to ar and arma right ar is just historical sorry ma and arma ma is just the error term and then arma is both the historical previous prices and the error term right similarly the difference between arch and garage uh, very popular in statistics and and uh, econometrics arch and garage prim are primarily used for uh, forecasting um, whereas gbm is more popular in asset pricing um, a lot of things uh, in lot of things in finance uh, these techniques are used especially in option pricing uh, or just forecasting the return you know you were you were trying to do an investment in a given asset try to use these models to just to understand how volatile a given asset is and then uh, then uh, invest based on uh, in, in less volatile assets uh, hedging also uh, in hedging also that means if an asset is very very volatile uh, in the future i think you might want to hedge uh, the risk of uh, you know losing money so which techniques are preferred historical techniques are easy actually if you do not have good computational power you are not mathematically sophisticated you can go for historical uh, techniques that such as moving average you know very easy you can do that in an excel sheet also you don't need anything any sophisticated modeling software whereas arima or uh, arch gas these models are used uh, in more uh, research uh, driven financial research firms where people have a un good understanding of mathematics gbm and these sort of techniques are used uh, especially uh, i mean both gbm and arch gas are used but gbm is particularly used in uh, regulatory modeling uh, related activities less in the investment area okay thanks